Hello, and welcome to Unplug Live with Heather Hayward, Mastering the Art of Self-Commitment. You know that you make promises to yourself, and you know what you need to do. You know even what you need to do. How come we're not even doing it? Yet, we actually keep the promises that we make to everyone else. So when I was thinking about this for myself, I'm like, who should I speak to? And the number one person that came to mind was the legendary, unplug famous Heather Hayward. Unplug um, and Heather are synonymous. Heather has done classes where you can't even get into the class. They're so packed. She is on the Unplug Meditation app and has so many meditations on there. One of my favorite is for when you are overwhelmed. A recent meditation that she just did is really about mastering self-promises, mastering commitments. So today we're going to learn a little bit about Heather. She is going to give us her best tips and techniques from decades of being a world-famous life coach. And she's going to be sharing a meditation and we'll be going through your questions. I want to also say thank you so much to all of you who've shown up. I see a lot of familiar faces out there. Um, if you want to show us your faces, we love seeing you. If not, that's okay too. And without further ado, I would like to introduce you to my dear friend and one of my own personal life coaches, Heather Hayward. Hello, Heather. Hi. Oh, this is so exciting. I have to contain myself because I feel like um, confetti. I feel like I am conf like like I could just burst seeing everyone. And I was also um, unplug and I are um, twins because we have the same goal and we want the same, which is for people to find peace inside their mind. Peace of mind, eh, but peace inside their mind with community too, so that we can all come together. And I've been a part of Unplug since 2014, long time. So thank you, Susie, for uh, inviting me to have this conversation with everyone. I look forward to answering questions, to have the dialogue be what it's going to be. And I also want to um, say, Susie, you have been an incredible uh, partner in being an entrepreneur with me, and especially throughout these years. So I want to say thank you for staying true to what you really wanted to build and staying true through very rough waters. And you didn't capsize. And here we are because of it. So thank you. Thank you. Well, so many people who are on this call, I'm sure are as excited as I am. I feel that confetti feeling because we love you. You have saved us from when we're angry, from when we made, needed to make a U-turn into ourselves. There are so many meditations and I kind of wanted to share some of them with our audience just to kind of go through some of these incredible titles that we've worked on together. Um, finding your center, meditation for digital distraction. People loved that. Self-commitment, which is one of my favorite meditations of all time. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. Your get happy quick, meditation for stress relief, meditation for a resilient mindset, when you can't sleep, on good health, powerful thoughts, relax and refuel. I mean, there's just, I can, from fl flailing to floating, um, don't worry, a PM bad day be gone. I mean, the birthday meditation, saying no for people pleasers. There's just, when someone's driving crazy, when you're going through a divorce, people probably don't even know that we have that. That was an incredible meditation. And I could go on and on and on and on. And I would like to, but I won't. Heather, I would love to hear a little bit about your trajectory from how you got into this work. And, you know, you're, you're really coaching people all the time and some of the tools and techniques that you use to keep people on track, because we know that it's hard, but yeah, for you, it's not. Yeah. Well, um, 
You know, I'd like to actually start with the most important decision I ever made in my life. I was 17 and I made a decision to not drink and use no matter what. So I have been sober since I was 17. Um, at the time of this recording, I am 60. And to be able to stay continuously sober meant I had to be willing to feel all my feelings. And in order to feel all my feelings, it meant that I had to learn how to have mind over mood. And I used to always say, you know, I'm not bipolar, but I'm bimodal. I have, they, they come so quick. They come so quick, they, they don't even last. But what that also meant was that I was always taking my temperature. Now do I want to do this? I made a commitment. Well, now I don't feel like it. So when I was 17 and I made that decision, I became very clear about me because I didn't have a lot of buffers. I couldn't smoke doobies. I couldn't, you know, do any of that stuff. And I became clear about who I am and what I'm here to do. And I became a body worker, massage therapist, somatic work. And that lasted for 20 years. And I thought I would go right to my grave doing hands-on stuff. And I just thought that my thumb gave out. And when my thumb gave out, I then went back to school at 40 and got all the training, 17 certifications, because I'm that insecure that I had terrible fear of, you know, that I wouldn't know something. And I became a clinical hypnotherapist and then did that for, well, it's been 20 years. Uh, and then in the, in the interim, I coach so many people, so many therapists and coaches. I became the coach's coach and they would say, God, can you teach me how you do this? So what was the, this was leading people within. And I have always dealt with anxiety. Some people have depression. I had anxiety. I had worry notorious for my worry. I was only allowed three what ifs as a child. Well, what if the dog is dead? What if we get in an accident? What if the car? And my parents were like, you're only allowed three because I would just go on and on. And they didn't know what OCD was, you know, back in the day. So um, everything that I have done in my career has been totally in alignment what I'm here to do. So I think all of us have like our areas where the shoe fits and, but where I've had to overcome is I have three husbands, me and, re, me and men relationships, but I can tell you this, there just was because I'm still super tight with all of them. I love them. They are my best friends. So there are areas where now, of course, I don't have it all together. But where I do have it together is I don't abandon myself to moods because commitments are so important as convictions are. And I know what I'm convicted to. I know what my convictions are, what my values are. And it's what I do consistently that matters. So I am someone who all these years later, uh, in 2017, I started a company with my son. And let me tell you, everyone, if you want a PhD in um, how grown up or how untriggerable you are, go into business with your kid. And we have made it through all the different ways that our personalities mix and match and, and bruise and well. But my answer any time I go into anxiety, oh my God, if I made a mistake or a sense of confusion, when I go into solitude, whether it's a walking meditation or meditative journaling or writing or whatever it is, I find my way because I lose my way a lot. And anyone who thinks they have the way run, <laughs> run and run and run because no one has my way. And I believe in my, my heart of hearts that guiding people within to find 
that place, their own truth, their own whisper of honesty, God, I'm not happy. God, there's got to be something else. Something's missing. To be able to stay there and write is the place that I'm meant to guide people in because that's the only place that then I can act from peace. When I have those pieces kind of in line, not always perfectly put together, but enough so, I can stay committed. So that is in a very long winded way, where I am today is in a place of more mentoring than one-on-one -on -one coaching. I want to teach people how to do this. And I also love to be on the Unplug app so that we can all do these things together. You know, different topics, different areas where we just need to know that we're not alone and that there are others going through it, you know, just like, just like me. And, um, and that is it. I mean, that's, that's it. I, I hope I didn't say too much. Uh, you, not even enough. Uh, one of the things that you've said before um, that I've heard you say on the Unplug app is that you don't take a vote. Can you mm -hmm. tell um, people a little bit about that when it comes to getting things done? So when I was um, six months sober, actually, I was 18. My dad took me to Maui. And he taught me sadhana, kundalini yoga, breath of fire, la la la. And he showed me what you do right when you wake up and you get on the floor and you do yoga and you do breath work and you, you do this for two hours. Now, I know that's extreme to anyone else, but that's just what my dad did. And so that's what I did for 12 years. I just, I didn't take a vote. So my dad said, you don't wake up and ask, do I want to do this? When you make a commitment, and then I started race walking and everything, I ritualize everything. So just, you know, don't, don't think I'm really disciplined. I just, I just don't take a vote. So I don't, I don't tune in to, you know, do I feel like doing this? If I've made a commitment the night before that I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for a walk with a friend, I'm not the person who cancels. I always say, stick with your first commitment. And if all you can do is get there for the walk or get there to get off the digital at 8 p.m., you know, just do it and then go, you know what? I'm halfway on my walk, I'm going home. But don't take a vote about what you committed to because then you are training your brain that there's always an open door and then you become that person who is a variable. You know, those people who are variables. Yeah, I made a plan, but you know, you never know. Yeah, she committed to doing the class, but you know, she's always getting subs. Yeah, you know that person, but guess what happens to those people? They don't have a lot of relationships because people can't count on them. Well, if you can't count on you, you can't be counted in your personal relationships. So it's a trickle. It's this wave that keeps going. So if it's Stephen Covey, first things first. And first, for me, it's that private self, personal victory before public. You know, it's that have I set clearly the end result? You know, what do I want to be doing by? Is it stretching? I can't stand stretching. So let's not talk about that. Let's talk about walking 20,000 steps. That's what I do. Uh, so that's it. You don't take a vote. You make a plan and you just show up. And what's interesting, and they've done this, all this research, all it takes is about 12 minutes of being on the treadmill, 12 minutes of studying you know, where you, you get in the groove and it's switching. The moment we allow ourselves to entertain a different choice, we are diffusing our focus and what we're losing is our power. And then we begin to feel disempowered. After disempowerment, we get discouraged. 
And then if it keeps going, we have despair. When all we needed to do was just show up. Don't take a vote. I love that. And when I listen to your meditations, there's something about the mantras that you use that resonate in such a significant way with me. Um, two of them that I'll just share are train change what if to what is. And the other one is inhaling focus, exhaling, follow through. Can you talk a little bit about those mantras? For me, I, I know many people meditate to clear their mind. And I think that is fabulous for those people who perhaps don't have a, a creative mind to scare the crap out of them at all times. So I have to give my mind something to ponder. And I call it, give your mind a bone. So if I give myself a focus, breathing in right, breathing out here, focus, follow through, whatever it is, I have a better chance at feeling better by the end of the meditation. Because meditation can turn into rumination so quickly for me because what I have overcome in my life is anxiety. Some people just aren't anxious. They don't worry. And I happen to be that person who runs toward worry. That's where I say, God, I'm worried about it. Oh, I wonder how this is going to turn out. And I quickly change my self-talk because the body reads everything is true. The body has no defense against thought. So immediately as we have a thought that we keep repeating, it becomes that feeling and the body then shows this, that feeling as an embodiment. Oh no, that whole thing. So if I go, God, I'm, I'm worried if no one shows up to this unplugged live coaching, I, I wonder what's going to happen today. So that is super important to repeat what I want to live, repeat what I want to feel and really get a hold of that prefrontal cortex and be able to focus on what I'm choosing to. One of mine that I say all the time is, I choose which thoughts I repeat. I am that kind of powerful. Sometimes it'll be silently and sometimes it'll be out when I'm walking. And I always wear a headset so they don't think I'm snoodle doodle weirdo. Um, but I am talking to myself completely. And I always say words have authority over thought. So if you're really going through it, speak life, speak strength, speak empowerment out into the ethers. Because sometimes you have to say it to say, I choose which thoughts I repeat. I am that kind of powerful. And sometimes I've had to walk myself down corridors when my dad was in the hospital and going through all his surgeries. I had to keep reclaiming my focus and recommitting to where my faith was, where my trust was. Because what's going to take me out of being able to repeat something is just fear. You know, it's just I don't really get lost in much. I'm not a, I'm not an, an angry person. I don't, I don't really do that. I'm more fearful. Oh no, the sky is falling. <laughs> I so. love in, I love in the um, letting go of worry meditation that you do. You always say, stop thinking about what if this, what if that, what if this, and let's talk about what is, what is, is you're listening to my voice. And it just works like a charm every single time. So I'm gonna give you a personal example. We're gonna be going through questions. We have the little meditation we're gonna do first with you. But first question um, is gonna be an example of something I struggle with. And hopefully I'll be sharing things other people struggle with. And that is that I struggle with just, you know, overeating. I love overeating. I love feeding myself all the time. I'm a, I always say I'm a volume eater and I'm a grazer, which is like double bad. But I made a commitment to myself that I was going to sit down and eat. So I could only eat if I'm sitting. And then I broke that commitment 
<laughs> oh, I made that yesterday morning and I broke it last night. So how can someone like me who, yes, I keep commitments to everyone else, but sometimes I can't commit to myself. How can you lock it in? Mm. Um, so food is such a complicated thing because it has so much emotional connection, so much, such an emotional component to food because it is comfort. It is soothing. It is reward. It is for boredom. People also eat in between transitions because they don't know how to transition between work and home, between stopping putting the kids down and now going to bed. And because we're a snacking society, here's a cookie, here's a shake, here's a this, here's a that, it's so unconscious. So forget about craving, forget about carbs and sugar and all that. If you don't eat it, you don't crave it. So forget that. I'm not a nutritionist, so forget that. I think what happens with food is we forget to remember what we told ourselves to do. So you forgot to remember, oh yeah, I can't eat and now you're eating. So one of the things is I'm a big sticky person. I have stickies everywhere. I have colorful stickies to remind me of what habit or pattern that I have put in place. So I think it's also knowing what is the payoff that you think you're going to get and what are you waiting for? When I, then I'll. When I lose the weight, then I, da, da. When I, da, 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 then I'll. And kind of stepping out of when and then to here and now. So if it's when I, because there's always something with food. There's always, you know, when I stop eating sugar, then I won't have the headaches. When I stop eating carbs, then I'll have a flat stomach or whatever it is. There's so many different things. But weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, sometimes is W-A-I-T. Wait, wait. What are you waiting for? And food is, again, emotions that we don't want to feel. So what I tell people is, Allow the emotions to subside before you decide to break your commitment. But if you can't remember what you're committed to, emotions will just come over and everything goes out the window. We know that the limbic is so much more powerful than a decision that we made. So the decision has to also be linked to something more than um, a fad. You know, everyone's doing this, so now I'm going to do this. Uh, it has to have much more meaning. So I didn't really answer it because it's it's a very um, it's a weighty <laughs> topic. No, I love it. You it's answered easy. it. You answered it well. Um, I'm just going to answer Olga's question: committing to a daily morning meditation. Any tips? Yes. And my tip is something I actually learned from Heather Hayward, which is. Don't take a vote. When I wake up in the morning, I don't say, should I or shouldn't I meditate? I just do the thing. I wake up, I am in my bed, I click the meditation of the day on the app, I lay back down and I do that thing and then I get up. Like at this point, you can't pay me not to do that in the morning. And I'm almost at a thousand days consecutive, which I'm really proud of. Um, so that is because of you, Heather. The don't take a vote is such a powerful mantra. And speaking of mantras, maybe we can do a little five-minute meditation before we get into the questions, because we have a lot Ooh. of them. RPM, rise, P, meditate. <laughs> That's a David Gism. That's a good one, Dana. Love it. So wherever you are, I want you to get comfortable and close your eyes and allow the breath to be in and out through your nose. And allow your jaw to be slightly open your shoulders to give way. 
and breathing in right and breathing out here. And leave the right here of my voice and go to right here to your heart as if you could hear a whisper saying right here drop into the sanctuary of your heart stay in your heart and imagine that you could look up from that organ up to the brain and notice all the chatter. Don't wrestle with it. Just notice it. And then drop back down into your heart. Right here. Until you can find that lullaby from your soul saying, you can rest. You can give it a rest. Come into right here. Now move the body. Does it need anything else? Your eyes remain closed. Does it need anything? Only you are important. And as you come into the heart, what is one commitment that you can make to honor you? The one commitment that is important in my life now is my commitment to myself is slow the breath down and listen to what came, the dialogue within. And staying in the heart, I want you to breathe in consciously with commitment and conviction. What you want to feel more of right here. Imagine taking that energy or those words, whatever really resonates with you, and imagine being able to think in a way that is more focused, more clear, and peaceful. Allow your attention now to rest right behind your eyelids still closed. And allow a smile to wash across your mouth. Allow your arms to just stretch, eyes still or closed. Maybe even rolling your shoulders back, just slight movement. Then in the next one or two breaths, slowly begin to open your eyes. And if it feels right and the time is good, just jot down what came to you about commitment from your heart. Thank you. That was so beautiful. Wow. 
Olga put a reminder on her phone. Yeah. So if you can um, write down, if you want to, what came into your heart, we'd love to see that. We're going to start with some questions because this is a great opportunity for our community to be able to actually speak with you, someone that they've only meditated with, to be able to really connect with you. One of our questions is, what if we are constantly overstretching ourselves by saying yes to too many things? So the over yesers, I always say, are a bit of people pleasers. Be willing to have people be annoyed with you, pissed with you, angry at you, because people will always take advantage and always be in your inbox and always be on your text and always be pinging notifications. And since we do treat, uh, teach people how to treat us, we've got to first know where our NO is, where our line in the sand is. When do we start our day? When do we stop? What do we want to accomplish? And really, how much time do we have for everybody else's communication? Because if you know who you are, there's a word that I, I was writing um, from Mark Devine, uncommon resolve. He talks about an unbeatable mind, uncommon resolve to not allow anyone to interrupt us. And I think he wrote three books in 2013. I may be wrong, but I think it was three books by really focusing on no and knowing what he was here to do. So drop the people pleasing. I mean, really? It's so 2014. <laughs> okay, next question. Guidance on how to one, determine which goals to focus on when you have a lot and often get into analysis paralysis. And number two, set realistic goals with yourself. Mm. I always say when I've worked with people with goals, they usually have a year that's really meant for a five-year plan. So I like people to have a, a list of things but also know what are you already committed to and how much time do you really have allotted for this new thing? A audit of time, the 168 hours, I think that's right, to really look at here's how many hours here, here, and here. All of a sudden, if you start from that foundation, you won't have magical thinking taking over a day planner or, or a new journal. Ideas, are very expensive because they can just take you off over here and over here. So if you think about what kind of time do I have to devote to the goal of starting a new business or the goal of getting in shape, and then you become realistic with that. And also know what is the reason for this goal? What is my why? What's my reason? Why do I want to go back to school and get a PhD? Why do I want to start my own unplugged studio? Do you know what I mean? Like, why do I want to do this or that? To understand that, but to also really be honest with yourself. What are you already committed to? Because you're going to have to say no to something in order to go forward. And most people, what they do is they just keep stacking the old goals into the new year old goals, new year, blah, blah, blah. And then the other thing that I, I talk about in my uh, coaching is people talk about roles and goals. Here's the role. Um, they have the, the role that you have, business person, and here are the goals. The role is mom, and here are the goals. So it's role, goal, here's the role. Okay, here are the goals. But everyone's forgetting about the soul. Because the soul is the thing get, that gets left behind. And then we have symptoms of how we're really feeling. The body is inflamed. I have headaches. I have IBS. I have this. I have that. So I think when it comes to roles, really understanding your nature. Do you really want to be sitting in front of a computer 14 hours a day when you say you want to have an online business? Is that what your soul wants? I get what your role wants or needs but it's to be able to get really clear on the soulfulness of you. Oh, Heather, how do you do that? 
Where do you play? Where do you become childlike? Like I said, only, only in the area of work and profession and advocation did I get this right this lifetime. As I said, relationships, eh. But in terms of this, I have never not done what I've loved to do. And that's what I'm very good at honing in on is the soul behind the roles and the goals. Because I always say a lot of my work has been not soul retrieval in the spiritual way of, you know, they've been hijacked from, by some dark entity and some alien that leaves in, lives in Jupiter or something. <laughs> I don't go there. I talk about when people have achieved the all of it, the money, property, prestige, what is missing? And it's the soulfulness. It's writing, it's piano, it's art, it's gardening, it's hanging out with friends, it's all those things. So remember, allow your goals to be informed by your true nature, not just a self-help book or something that somebody else has said. You'll run into another dead end and then look for the escape of a new dopamine hit on TikTok and buy it <laughs> like I used to do, 2 a.m. Okay, next question. How do you balance keeping a commitment to yourself and remaining flexible for new situations or opportunities that arise? That's a juicy one, isn't it? Staying committed to myself and being able to have, for me, discernment. Is this synchronicity? Is this perhaps a divine intervention to my best thinking? Wait a minute, I'm totally committed to doing this. Now this has come over here. Should it now become my main meal or is it just a little seasoning? So how I do it is with discernment how you have discernment, you got to spend a lot of time in solitude to be able to know who you are, not who you are when you have the wild chemistry of new ideas and new stuff, because there's nothing more exciting than talking to a human about a joint venture, a trip, a this or that, only to realize, oh my God, this isn't what I wanted to do. And then you're left with, I feel out of sync. I feel irritated. I feel like, Oh, I didn't. Uh. So discernment is how I do it. Okay, next question. That was great. I give up very easily when something doesn't work my way the first time. I really want to overcome that. Is there a mantra that I can say? <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me, let me go current time. So when Hunter and I started the guided meditation framework and started this whole thing, I was so clear, this is my next. You know, and you're like, this is what I want to do. And you're up here and you feel like the universe is giving you signs like, yeah, this is what, oh, this is what you should do. Oh, but there is Brenda. Blah, blah, blah. So you got all this great emotion and this great enthusiasm. You know, they talk about the three, you know, you got to have your passion and your purpose and your priority. Okay, great. All this passion. Then Hunter and I start to but heads about how the modules are happening or how this or how that. I'm gonna tell you what I truly did. This is, I have emotional temper tantrums. I would get in the car, I would just leave the conversation, get in the car and leave, but I never quit. I need to leave to cool down. When I speak and I'm like, mm, and then I make decisions from that place, all, always, most of the time, regrets. So I have to reconnect to, wait a minute, why was I excited about this? What just happened? Oh, he just gave me critique that I wasn't clear about how to teach such and such. So you also have to know, what's your Achilles heel? Is it criticism? Is it fear of not being enough? Is it fear of being stupid? Is it fear of, it's always fear of something usually. And know that, okay, when someone walks in that territory, you might be a little bit off sometimes. So for me, I have to take a break. I have to step away to regroup 
so I can come back to that commitment. So I don't let myself down and then be in this perpetual thing of always starting something and never finishing and never fulfilling my potential. Do you have a mantra like per se that you can share? Um, for me, I do a lot of just this much. I can handle just this much and trusting that when emotions subside, I'll decide what to do, that I don't have to make decisions in the moment. And my big mantra that I live with, that we live by is everything is all right right now and everything works out. My experience, and that is with thing, people having tragedy, people dying, that, 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 it's not everything works out, which means it's always a happy little, you know, ribbon on the thing. No, it's like everything works out. Everything is all right right now, even though I have unresolved problems, unresolved conflict, unresolved decisions. Everything is all right right now. And I would say right now, not in two hours. And I really learned this with my dad and, and all of his health things. Everything is all right right now because I didn't know what the next hour would be. So that is my mantra. Great mantra. Um, I always hear the tune, Bob Marley. Don't worry about a thing. So whenever you're like stressing out, it's a great, <laughs> great, great soundtrack. How do you keep promises to yourself when going through a significant loss? Uh, I make sure the promises are in alignment uh, with my relationship with God. And God for me is grace on demand. What is grace on demand? The sun, the moon, the ocean. It's stepping into God for me is going to a place of awe. When I hear a river, when I hear the ocean, when I'm underneath the tree, there's something about it that brings that spiritual component. So I have to make sure that I'm not doing too much when I'm going through things like that. And Susie, you know, when I was going through all of the stuff, I had to say, Susie, I can't do the lives anymore. I am, I'm at my, my limits. I don't have it. And of course I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say a lie. Of course I feared that you would be mad. No, I didn't fear anything because Susie and I are totally honest with each other. There's never been a moment where I've people pleased or I feared that if I didn't do this, then I wasn't never. And when you're honest with people and you are true, you're just who you are. Guess what? They can be who they are. So I was very honest, whoever is going through a loss or anything, to start to take stuff off my plate. I told my friends, I may not get back to you right away. I don't even know sometimes day in and day out what's going on. And so I allowed my, I gave myself a permission slip, a slip, a hall pass, a preemptive to get ahead of letting people down or people assuming that I was ignoring them. So that's the other thing. Be so clear in your boundaries that, hey, right now, this is a season where I need to pull back a bit. And I pulled back, Susie, for a couple of years because I had to. And now I'm all in. And now here we are. Let's By the way, go. these questions are so good. I want to thank our community because there's some in here and I'm like, that, that's me. That's me. I'm reading these questions are so good. Um, and Heather, just I just want to acknowledge our community too. We are at 115 people live and we've been at 115 people live the whole time. Which is amazing because they're hanging out with us and staying wow. with us. So you're following your commitment to be on this call for one full hour. And you should all acknowledge yourself that you said you were going to do it and you're actually doing the thing. So I want to honor, honor. Oh, I didn't even see the number. Hi, yeah. everyone. <laughs> um, how do you? Okay, there's two minutes. I want to do this one first. How to get back on track. How to build momentum. How to not overwhelm yourself with promises. 
easy. I have a, a planner called Seeing My Time, and it allows me to look at my year goals, allows me to look at my month, allows me to plan my week and plan my day. I make sure that everything is feeding everything. So it's not stimulus response, new exciting idea. Hey, why don't you do this cleanse with me? Let's do this for 21 days. There are too many variables and variables for me leave me insatiable. I do not feel satiated when I don't know what the plan is and what I'm doing and where I'm heading. So every day, I won't look at my planner because it's right there, but I have one little planner. Can you that share I, it? Can I, you share I, it? Let's see what it looks like. All of my community knows that I have, this is my seeing my time. Seeing, it's called seeing my time. It's just the best thing. Seeing my time planner. And it allows me to look at my whole year, which I won't look, have you guys look, but I look at my year. I then look at the projects. Then I circle out my calendar of things. So what am I doing, everyone? I'm seeing my time. When time is digital, it's not as valuable because we can just erase something from our computer. Oh, delete event. Yes, that's it. The, the executive, yes. I. This is what I work out of with my um, clients. Then it allows me to really see the first truth of time out of sight, out of mind. It allows me to have that tactile, which is more subconscious. So I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. So my whole thing is subconscious. And when you take a pen and you write and you have stickies like I do for my projects and I have colored things, I'm really organized. And then for each day, I write out my day. I look at my week. I spend the time each week. So what that means, it's kind of like a person, I don't do this, but getting on the scale every day, you're not all of a sudden going to go, oh my God, I gained 15 pounds. How did that happen? But if you get on every day, you're like, oh, this is a same thing with time. And this isn't just about um, making lists of to-dos. I am very orchestrated and organized it is it is a gift of of my brain um that's the nice thing about a little ocd <laughs> kind of go all right all right um but it feels so good to know where things are and the other thing is you don't i say this all the time you don't want your brain to be your office cabinet you don't want your brain to be your desk you don't want to be looking for stuff you want to have that organized so that your brain can be used for what it's meant for, which is creativity, imagination, connecting to all that is, not inundated with, I'm behind, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm always catching up. Well, that's because you haven't spent, and I always say 22 minutes. All it takes is 22 minutes to get yourself organized. For me, it's, it's about 22 because I take that and I look at my calendar. I keep all my appointments on my phone, but I have my to-do, so I do it. You know what? I'm, I am calmly focused. I have a sense of peace and massive purpose. And if I can say one, one of the main things with people is if they're not organized or they're too rigidly organized, they have too much rigidity and they can't allow for that other question, for that spontaneity when spirit says, or divine or whatever, why don't you drop everything and go to the mountains? You have to allow for those times to be spontaneous, but not it be a mood allow it to catch you from the outside. You know what I mean? Just like sometimes. So there's this delicate balance between structure and rigidity and between being chaotic and being creative. So structure and creativity is my sweet spot. There are so many questions. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to answer them all. 
I will take one last question here. Um, <laughs> Cause it's a biggie. Uh -oh. What is the first and last steps to making and sticking to self promises? Practical steps. I combined two questions in one. First and last steps to making and, and keeping commitments and promises to oneself. Uh, I really like the old school stuff of goodness, uh, Napoleon Hill, Psycho Cybernetics, Emmett Fox, Brian Tracy, all Jim Rohn. Morning and night, you read out your goals, you read out what you want to do. And if you're new to, say, sobriety, you can say, I don't drink and use no matter what. If you're new to being healthy, you know, I eat what makes me feel vital, strong, and alive. Whatever it is, so that you can go to bed with your verbalize, what you're saying to yourself, everything is all right right now. I choose which thoughts I repeat and you vitalize it with feeling. I feel strong, I feel dynamic, I feel encouraged and visualize, see it. So I call it the three V's where you verbalize, right. you vitalize and you visualize and you go to bed and all you really need is like five minutes. But how people go to bed is how they're priming their subconscious. And if you think about people doing dream work, people um, dealing with creativity, so many of the greatest thinkers in the world, Benjamin Frank, a couple of them, would put, they'd write on an index card a problem, put it underneath their pillow, and lo and behold, the subconscious would give you the gift. Not every time. So morning and night when you're, because you're always going to have your head on the pillow. So I always say the pillow is the target. And if the pillow is where you, where you can start, start to anchor that pillow with purpose. Anchor that pillow with what is my passion? What is the plan right now? Head hits the pillow and boom, you've got an anchor and you make it the cue Atomic Habits, James Cleary, the moment your head hits the pillow, boom, you're going and you are feeding yourself the nutrients of what you're here to do, to be, to become. Don't waste this, this life on being passive with your goals and your roles and your dreams. Because the scrolling, you're not going to give a rat's ass about that in two months. What were you scrolling last month? You don't know. But if you start this kind of stuff, when morning and night head hits the pillow, boom, anchor, become powerful and overcome. That's it. I think we have to land on that. That was just unbelievable. I'm so inspired, Heather. I feel so grateful that I have 50 as Jelena Wallace, who is with us today. Hi, Jelena. Hi, Jelena. Um, 50 meditations of yours are available on the Unplug app for everybody wow. to experience. How can people follow you? Should they go on your Instagram? Like, where's a great place for people to connect with you? To be totally honest, I am so, there's, you work on your business and in your business, you know, people spend a lot of time doing social and, you know, I'm terrible at it all. So um, I really don't have a place, but maybe YouTube. Uh, a little bit. I'm going to try and do stuff on Instagram. I have to ask Susie when stuff happens. I basically only post when I'm going to be out on plug. Um, I'm such an intimate person that I'm always really talking to people and not posting a lot. So I really, I wish I had that answer. Um, but uh, just no. wherever <laughs> I am. Okay. Well, she has an Instagram, which is at Heather Hayward. So you can follow her there. Um, she might not get back to you in other words, but she sometimes will post things. I will. Heather, wow. 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 And to our unplugged community, oh. I just want to thank you. Like they stuck this out. They were with us the entire time and this lives, this will be on our podcasts this will be on YouTube. This will be inside the Unplug app. So your words will not go away. They will be something that 
everyone can revisit over and over again. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you. We are going to end this recording, but we're going to stay on live too. And we'd love to see you. So if you want to show your face, um, we like to do that. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and joining me. And I so greatly appreciate it. And I wish you the best.